Thank you, Father, that you are hearing the prayers of your children tonight. Lord, you're there at the Father's right hand interceding for us, and we're grateful. We've come to worship you. We want to hear from you in our hearts tonight and be obedient to you in fulfilling the Great Commission, praising you and thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. And all of God's people said, amen. you may be seated. Glad that you are here uh, this evening. We welcome you. And uh, if you brought your children or your teens to one of the programs tonight, Thrive or uh, Team Kid, we're grateful and glad that you are here. I understand singing in the sun is going on this week. I can't believe they'd rather go over there and hear them preach than me, but we'll, we'll just have to live with that. And uh, no, I don't blame them, really. I'm sure all that's very good there this week. Um, lots happening in our fellowship in the months to come. Uh, Lord's Supper Sunday night, you want to be a part of that. That's a sacred moment in the life of the church. That is uh, an ordinance, one of our two ordinances. The first is baptism, and then our great privilege of being baptized believers is to come to the Lord's table. So we'll do that Sunday evening at 6.30. You don't want to miss uh, that. Lots happening in the month of May, beginning with the Quilts of Valor that first Sunday afternoon, and then the next week is uh, Mother's Day, Mother's Day breakfast. We call that the ladies' breakfast. Ladies want all of you to come. That's the one time of the year you're going to get the men to cook for you. And so come, come be a part of that. Then the following week is homecoming. Uh, I'm almost 57, so that means the church is 57 years old. I can't wait to the 75th anniversary, by the way. I'm looking forward to preaching that one. We'll see. Better pray. You never know. Man's years are 70, so we don't, we don't know. We'll just have to believe the Lord, right? But that is true. 57 years this year since First Baptist Church Myrtle Beach came out and started a church across the street in the house, and so we're thankful to God. So we must keep the commission going. Uh, we're, st we're still responsible. And there are other events after that. Um, the Family Fun Festival on a Saturday following that. Don't forget about Vacation Bible School over in July. And at the end of June, uh, Dr. Lynch will be back for our God and Country uh, Patriotic Sunday. All day long, choir going to sing that night. Going to have a great time uh, in the Lord and believe the Lord for revival in the churches and a great spiritual awakening globally. And boy, we need it. No doubt about that. So glad you're here. That's just sort of a rundown of everything happening. Uh, but... Uh, Mr. Kashat here will keep the slides up, so I mean, keep them going. Not tonight, not tonight, but uh, you'll know what's going on. So we're glad you're here. We need to pray for many. Many have had surgeries this week. Lisa Runnels is home doing well. Uh, Greg Pons had triple bypass surgery. He's still at Grand Strand doing very well, though. He should be home tomorrow or maybe Friday, uh, one, one of those days. Cindy Catalan, our pianist, uh, and thank you, Miss Cecilia, for fill, filling in tonight. But Miss Cindy had a knee replaced a couple of days ago, yesterday, not a couple of days ago. And uh, she's in some pain. We need to pray for her. Uh, that's to be expected. Uh, Claire, Claff, uh, Claire Caffrey uh, also had a knee replaced. She's doing good. I think she got home today. Uh, Laura Filia, our office assistant, her mother has some dementia, so we want to pray for her mother. Uh, Aaron Perkins is going to fly up to see his grandmother. She's declining. He wanted to go up and see her. I think he's flying out tomorrow, so we want him to have a safe trip. And I mentioned Lisa Runnels. She had uh, a procedure, but she's doing well also. Uh, pray especially for Sarah Cornell. Uh, she's doing fine, but her sister uh, has been very sick, and she's in hospice and uh, not really expecting her to live much longer. I talked to Miss Sarah today, but I promised her we would uh, pray for the family and her sister that does know the Lord's going to be going home uh, very soon. And speaking of sisters, uh, I got a message from my sister today. She's, well, she wouldn't want me to tell you, but she's 10 years older. But they found some melanoma, and she's going to have to have that taken. Uh, she's going to have surgery and a couple of three weeks, something like that. And so that's, that's concerning, uh, but we'll just pray that they, that they get that, and I'll let you know how she's doing. 
You also prayed for a cousin of mine named Cousin Carrie, and she also had cancer, but she's doing well. She had the surgery and got home, and she's, she's, things are looking up for her right now. So thank you for praying for her. There may be many more we need to remember, but let's remember lost souls. Keep praying for them. Keep sharing with them. Uh, don't forget about that. Adrian Rogers once said, we spend more time praying to keep saints out of heaven than we do sinners out of hell. Uh, we always pray and we get better and healed and we know if we die where we're going, uh, but we don't spend enough time praying for lost souls to be saved. So let's remember that because uh, it gets better from here from us, a lot better. But without Christ, it's not better. It's, a lot, it, it's eternal darkness and death and destruction. So we don't want that for them. We want them to be saved. Okay, but judgment is coming, so let's keep preaching the good news. It's the bad news that makes the good news so good. Others we need to remember tonight, just lift your hand and we'll hear from you. Okay, uh, Miss Mary? John Todd had her knee replacement, but there might be a tear, so she's... Right, that was over a month ago, yeah. Yeah, so she's um, off of her feet until she sees the doctor on the 24th. That was Don Todd. She's a member of our fellowship. She had a knee replacement, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago now. It's been a while. Uh, but having a little bit of trouble, so we're going to keep praying for her. Okay, I know other hands went up. Okay, Miss Charlotte, you first. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to have nasal surgery, and they put you out in South Station. So let me pray for you. I don't like that being put out right there. Yeah. 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 It's better that way. I have to yeah. All right. The Lord will raise thee up again, sister. <laughs> we're, we're not worried about it. We'll pray for you. Okay, Charlotte, tomorrow. Who else had a hand up? I know there were some others. Okay, brother, go ahead. Okay. For your heart. Had some tests for your heart. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll help you pray, brother. We sure will. Okay. Uh, Miss Dale. Uh, my uh, brother has, um, he's had stomach on his feet and they checked him and they said it's got grade 3 cancer. So they said he just had blood flow into his and this is your brother. Okay. I see. We will. We will pray. We sure will. Okay. We'll help you pray for your brother. We sure will. All right. Anyone else? Who else has a hand up? Okay. I see. Tony Britt. We will pray for Tony. We will also pray for Dave Hall. There he is, over on the left. Talk to us, brother. Please pray for my granddaughter, Sydney. She is anticipating having some back surgery done within uh, the next month or so. Uh, it's been a lifelong issue for her. Uh, also, uh, we also pray for her husband, Dave Hall. Uh, he is uh, having a Oh my. So, uh, and the son, uh, he's pretty lost right now. Uh, his living mate of 20 something years left him. Uh, mom's in the condition that she's in, so he's pretty stressed out right now. So we, we pray for that family. We will. We will. Thank you for that. We're also praying for you, brother. I want you to know that. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. You thought it was a heart attack, but it was a pinched nerve. It was going down my arm, so. I see. So, well, I'm thankful to God it wasn't a heart attack. Yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. Pray for Dr. Jones. He's out preaching at uh, Oakish Swamp and having himself a good time. I talked to him last week, the, uh, and we need to praise the Lord. The, the pastor's 13-year-old son at Langston... Uh, Brother Brandon's son, he, he was missing all night. He left prayer meeting and uh, kind of went out in the swamp there. Uh, but they turned out okay. The next, they found him the next morning, but that was sort of scary. So that's when I talked to him. So that's a praise. I'm glad that he didn't get n no harm there. So let's, let's look out for one another. Amen. Okay. Pray for Vacation Bible School that we're going to start praying now. Pray for our... Uh, God and Country Patriotic Sunday uh, with Dr. Lynch as he returns. 
and uh, pray for those lost souls to be saved. Let's not give up on them. Let's continue to pray and share and plead with them uh, to come to the Lord. Pray for Will Mazingo. Will, Will uh, you know the challenges he has, but he also has an online ministry, but his illness, he, he wanted something to do, and so he started Truth Inspired, and he connects our church services, and sometimes they're in uh, different parts of the world through his ministry, his website, they watch the services, and so, uh, but he's out at Singing in the, singing in the Sun tonight with the, a group called the Fortner Brothers, and he's giving away crosses and uh, you know, trying to encourage folks. So he, he's having a time out there tonight. So uh, pray for him in that. But always pray for them. They, they have quite a struggle. Will, Will Sr. and Jr., they need our prayers, okay? Others on your heart tonight, just lift your hand like that, or both of them, all right? Um, and whatever it is in your life, God knows about that. We're going to give that to him tonight. Uh, as we pray together, remember we're all praying. Pastor will lead the prayer, but we're all praying. So let's pray together. Give it all to the Lord. Father, we praise you. Lord, tonight for the teens and their meeting, God, we pray they hear the word and they receive the word implanted. Lord, for the children tonight as they're singing praises and learning your word, learning about you, Lord, we pray for their salvation, that, Lord, they hear the gospel and believe from their heart that Jesus is Lord and, Lord, you're risen from the dead. We pray they understand clearly, Lord, help, help them to see. Uh, we, we know that you'll work in their heart and we know that your word will not return void. Lord, tonight as we share the gospel here in this place and maybe someone watching online also, we pray that it's clear in their heart and their mind. They receive the word implanted. Lord, that everyone that hears the message tonight, as we go away, they're assured of their salvation. And Father, for those who resist and uh, reject and continue to do so, we know their hearts are growing harder and harder. So God, we pray they'd be saved before it's too late. God, give them a listening ear. May they, their eyes be open that they may see. That is our prayer. And God, we know you're the God of salvation. We just thank you we get to be a part of it and be vessels and spokesmen in sharing the gospel. Lord, for Sarah Cornell, our sister of family, we pray you just strengthen them tonight. These who are recovering, Felisa Runnels and Claire Caffrey, uh, Greg Pons, uh, all the others for uh, Sister Sherry, who has to have the surgery in a few weeks. For these others who are waiting on test results, just trusting in you tonight, oh God. For others tonight who have family members that they've brought and mentioned and they're concerned about, all of us, Lord, we pray that you intervene and your will be done. Father, for all of these events we have upcoming, uh, from the Quilts of Valor, thank you, God, for servants and all, all of those, Lord, who participate in that. We pray on that Sunday a word of testimony would change someone's life. Lord, through the family fun day, and perhaps many in the community will stop by. We want to share the faith and then reach, reach out to them. And God, watch over us and protect us this day in our church and in our community. And Lord, with the world situation, with the nation of Israel and all that's happening in the Middle East, with war in Ukraine, God, all so volatile. And we know that you're God and you're in control. You're going to bring the world to a close. We, we are certainly drawing nearer. We don't know how near, but Lord, you know. So we've got our trust in you. Help us, O oh God, to understand the urgency of our work in the Great Commission and sharing the gospel. And may we be at that, Lord. We pray for Sunday's message, O oh God, as it's proclaimed. And, and Lord, not only for the preacher, but for the hearers, that the word would be received and applied. And God, that those who continue to uh, hear but have not yet taken a step, have not yet trusted, have not yet making the commit, made the commitment, God, we pray in Jesus' name. This is the day, or Sunday coming, Lord, that you do a work and make it so real 
that they can no longer say no but yes to Jesus and yes to your will. Help us to do that, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. By the way, remember to pray. And uh, when it comes time for invitation, uh, when we're singing that last hymn, pray harder uh, that uh, decisions would be made. Tonight, Isaiah chapter 6, I was meditating on this today and I came across this thought about how difficult the task is becoming. And what do we do with hardened hearts? Uh, Did you know that hearts become harder when they resist the truth, when they reject, when they resist? And uh, what are we to do with those who refuse to believe in Jesus? Now, the way that happens in our culture is um, it's not necessarily outright opposition. They intend to be saved sometime, but they haven't been just yet. And they're waiting, so they think they can wait and wait and wait. The, the trouble is, upon hearing the gospel, when you reject the gospel and the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart, our heart then becomes harder. Um, and so it, it is essential that the Holy Spirit convict of sin and righteousness and judgment and draw us to salvation. And I remember very well when I was uh, seven years of age sitting in that revival meeting on the second row and drawing cars, I think I was doing. And so I sort of heard the message, but I must have heard the message because when it became, when it came to invitation time, something, something happened. Uh, Something got my attention. The Holy Spirit got my attention, I know now. And in the next days and weeks, I, I put my trust in Christ. I became a Christian. But so many in our culture are uh, rejecting the gospel. And it seems many who claim to be Christians are now walking away from the faith. And I, I don't know why they're pushing that in media so much. It seems like every time I turn my laptop on and the news pops up, somebody's giving me all these re- 18 reasons why people are walking away from Christianity. And then there's another article they'll word it differently. So why, what are we supposed to do in a difficult day when hearts seem to be hardened toward the gospel and lovers of self rather than lovers of God? The Bible talks about that in the last days. Well, Isaiah 6 is where we're going to go. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus. We're going to really read quite a bit of it, but I'm going to focus on one part of it in particular. And then we're going to have some applications from Isaiah 6. Now this is uh, Isaiah likely mourning the king, the death of a king. You can only imagine what that must uh, be like. Mourning the death of king. Now we call him King Uzziah. Uh, My Old Testament professor at Southwestern Seminary called him King Uzziah. And so we'll go with the scholar's pronunciation if you want to and call him Uzziah. But I've always called him Uzziah. But we, we know the king died and Isaiah is in the temple likely mourning his death. But God does something in Isaiah's life. This has been called his calling, uh, his commissioning. And I want us to see that tonight. But Isaiah's got a difficult task ahead of him and the Lord makes that clear to him uh, when he says, here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6, in the presence of the glory and of the king, here's what the word tells us. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The presence of God filled the place. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, in the holiness of God and couldn't look upon him. And with twain, he covered his feet uh, to serve God. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy. And by the way, that is for in, that's emphasis on God being holy. They cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Don't you love that hymn? Holy, holy, holy. I'll keep reading. The whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried 
and the house was filled with smoke. Something is happening in the temple. God is doing something. Well, in the presence of God, what do you say? You don't talk about how great you are, do you? Look at what Isaiah said. Then, I, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. And that's what happens to us when we get a picture of who God is in His presence. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man and land be utterly desolate. And the Lord hath removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. And that sounds like our land, doesn't it? A great forsaking in the midst of the land, but yet in it shall be a tenth. Here's, here's the hope of a great awakening of some sort. And it shall return, and it shall be eaten, and the Till tree as an oak shall, I mean, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So there's a glimmer, uh, there's a glimmer of hope. Well, in Isaiah chapter 6, we could talk about his conversion. They, in the presence of God, he realizes his own sin. And he says, woe is me. Uh, I am a man of unclean lips. We, we probably ought to be reminded tonight, and I, I'm, I never assume everyone present is a believer, is a Christian. I know an evangelist who goes to his meetings, and he told us, he came to our college one time, and he said, when I go to a meeting, he said, I never assume anyone in the place is a Christian. He says, I'm, I'm preaching to win souls, and I just assume all of them are lost. <laughs> That's the way he preaches. So I don't assume anyone is saved. Now, of course, if, if you know that you've repented of your sins, you have your faith in the Lord Jesus, you're really trusting in Him from the heart, and confession is made with the mouth. We talked about that Sunday. I'm not trying to get anyone to doubt their salvation. I just know there is a time in a person's life when they have to face their sin to understand we're sinners and truly be saved. And so we probably shouldn't pass that by too quickly, even on a Wednesday night. Uh, in days past, I've given an invitation on Wednesday night, and someone who had brought their teenager, their child, and the prior church also, they made a decision for Christ on a Wednesday. And uh, any, today is always a day of salvation. It's always a good time to put your trust in the Lord. So if you don't know that you're saved for sure, turn from your sin to Christ, ask Him to forgive you. Now you can see in the passage here, um, Isaiah found, he, he was converted. He says here, he confessed his sin, and then the uh, seraphims came unto him. And this is a sign of uh, cleansing from the altar. It touches his, verse 7, laid it upon his mouth, touched his lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. How is our iniquity taken away? How is our sin purged? Well, it's by the blood of Jesus. The Lord Jesus, his blood washes away our sins. The moment you put your faith in Him and trust in Him, all of our sins are uh, forgiven. So Isaiah is called, he's converted. But now notice, and this is the part where I want to encourage us tonight to continue to share the faith and not give up. And 
uh, hear, hear what the Lord had to say to Isaiah in commissioning him. And he pretty much tells him, uh, you, you got your work cut out for you and their hearts are going to go harder and harder and harder at your preaching. And he said in verse eight, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? This is his calling. Whom shall I, who shall go for us? And so Isaiah answers the call. Here am I, send me. I wonder if you come to that point in your life and you said to the Lord God, whatever you want from me, Lord, I'm here I am, send me. We, we live in a nation of lost people, no longer a Christian nation. There are believers, you're some of them, thank God for that. But there is a calling to win lost souls to Christ and that's what we must be doing. And so who's going to say, Lord, here am I, send me. What do you want me to do with my life? That doesn't mean everybody's going to pastor church. It does not mean everyone's going to be a missionary on the other side of the world, but it does mean we're all missionaries where we are. Uh, some pl- where, where we are, wherever God's called us, whatever he has us doing, we're sharing the gospel. We're missionaries right where we are. We're God's representatives. So Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Well, when you say, here am I, send me, here's what God says. God says, go. Send me, O Lord. God says, go. And this is where... Isaiah learns that uh, his commission is going to be one that is very difficult. In fact, it doesn't look good at all because God, God doesn't tell him a great revival is going to break out. What he tells him is their hearts are hard and they're going to get harder. Listen to what he says. Go tell this people. Now he tells them uh, here, they should hear, but they're not going to hear. They should understand, but they're not going to understand. And their eyes should be open, but their eyes will remain closed, and they're going to perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, that means dull. Make their ears heavy, shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Now, let me tell you about that passage, and I I didn't, uh, I was reminded today in my studies This is actually the work of God in hardening hearts. Uh, That's one thing that God does upon the rejection, the resistance of uh, the truth. And so God uh, hardens hearts. That's why he tells Isaiah that's going to uh, happen. Now, one thing we need to hear about that in being uh, spokesmen for God, messengers of truth. Even though the world resists the truth, we must continue to speak the truth and do it in love. You notice what Isaiah said. Now, Isaiah is concerned about the people. He even says in verse 11, Then said I, Lord, how long? Do you want me to continue to do this? Have you asked the Lord that question in your ministry or in your sharing with your neighbor or that person that just doesn't want to listen at all, and the more you talk about it, it seems the hard, the, the hearts are just getting harder. They're just turning colder and colder, and you're ready to give up. Well, listen to what he says. Lord, how long? And he answered, and he's really talking about destruction. There was a fulfillment of this prophecy already. Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and land utter, be utterly desolate. The Lord has moved, removed men far away. There will be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. So that's the hardening. But notice that God tells Isaiah, his spokesman, his prophet, you continue. Lord, how long? You continue. Until it, it really it's until the until destruction comes, you continue. How long do we continue with the Great Commission? How long do we continue to tell the world about Jesus, even though many of them, most of them, are not listening and their hearts are hardening? How long? Well, what does God tell Isaiah? Well, you, you just keep preaching. <laughs> you just keep preaching until destruction comes. Do you know the story of Noah? You do know about Noah, right? 
Do you not, and realize this, sometimes people miss this. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Do you know how many years Noah preached before the flood? Anybody know? Say it out loud if you know. hundred and what? 120 years. How many converts did he have? The family. That was it. His sons. That was all. And by the way, if you saw the movie and I didn't see the movie, I'm not much on cinematic Bible stuff. They just, in Hollywood, they just don't get it right. And I get, sometimes they do. I mean, Gibson's passion, that was, that was good. I'm, I'm not, you know, opposed to all of it. But Austin went to see the one on Noah and he said, Dad, they had a stowaway on the ark. I said, they had a stowaway? He said, yeah. I said, Noah went back there and found, <laughs> found some stowaway on the ark. Well, it was, that, that does, the Bible doesn't say that happened. So let's stick to the text, right? But the point is, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah wasn't a bad preacher. But 120 years, their hearts grew harder and harder. They thought he was ridiculous, building an ark, talking about a flood, until the destruction came. So how long did Noah preach? Well, he preached right up till the destruction. But they did not, they did not listen. Our commissioning, like Isaiah's, as we continue going... We keep sharing. We're going to be faithful to the gospel. And if we love lost souls, and like Isaiah, uh, he, to be faithful to God, he must speak the truth. He's got to tell the truth. And we have to tell the truth. What does the Bible say in Ephesians? Speak the truth in, we speak the truth in love because we love them. But we can't stop short of telling the truth of the gospel we can't adopt some sort of easy believism in the local church that is less than calling on folks to do what the Bible says, and that is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus is Lord and Lord of my life. And without trusting in Christ, the Lord... Without believing that God raised him from the dead, uh, souls are lost. There's only one way of salvation. So we must continue to be faithful to share the gospel and to proclaim the gospel to lost souls. And now, now note it. Now that's the hardening. That's also going to happen, by the way. That doesn't mean we need to stop. Our missionaries are still going and not everyone is listening. We're still sharing. There's a hardening. But there's also a ray of hope. And this is why we continue to pray for revival in the church and a great, a great awakening in the land because, uh, yeah, verse 12, the Lord is a movement far away. There's a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Well, we all know about that, don't we? But now notice the ray of hope in verse 13. Uh, there shall be a tenth. He's talking about a remnant. Isaiah is talking about the, even though the tree is, uh, the tree's down, there's a, the, the stump, this, this, there's a seed there, the whole, there's something to come forth. And so there's this ray of hope that Isaiah is given in his preaching. God is hardening hearts. Isaiah, you're going to keep preaching and they're going to hear, but they're not going to hear. Uh, their eyes are closed, their, their hearts are getting harder and harder, they will refuse. But Isaiah, there will be those who will come to believe. There will be a remnant. So we're believing God for revival in the church and a great awakening in the land. Uh, many of us wonder if there'll be another great awakening before judgment comes. Well, we don't know. But we're not, we're not going to stop. We're going to continue sharing the gospel. So if you've been tempted to give up on them and they're not listening and you're wondering what to do, well, we're going to keep loving. We're going to keep sharing. So, well, pastor, the more I share, the harder their hearts get. You ever wonder how a preacher feels? <laughs> the more I preach it the, and the more they say no, the harder their hearts get. I've heard Dr. Graham say at the Crusades that, you know, the Holy Spirit is at work in your heart tonight and the Holy Spirit might not be at work in your heart ever again, just like he is tonight. Now is the time. Now is the accepted time. 
Today is a day of salvation. No longer wait. Do you understand that danger in the hearts and lives of people that reject the truth, reject the gospel, say no to the wooing of the Holy Spirit? Many people think they can get saved anytime they like, but once your heart, once your heart grows hard and you stop listening, how then will you be saved? I have in my ministry, and I know I've told this story, uh, I'll tell it again quickly. A fella called here. He was concerned about someone in his family. They were right, right down there. They call it Angel Oak now. Didn't know him. He said, Pastor, will you go see him? I think it was his grandfather. He said, he's not saved. He said, we tried to talk to him. He won't listen. We thought maybe he would listen to a preacher. We found out you're right there at him. Will you go by? So I go by. I go in and introduce myself. I talk about Jesus for a little bit. And then he finally just tells me, uh, preacher, I appreciate you coming by. He said, I'm not a believer. He said, uh, but I, I appreciate you coming by. He said, you made, a, you made a good effort. He said, but I, I'm not a believer. Dying with cancer, he had, he had less than a month to live. One of our deacons, I came back and told him at the meeting. So one of our deacons said, well, I want to go try. I said, well, go try. So he did. Same thing. He told me what happened. He said, Pastor, what are you going to do? I said, well... What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to go try again. I'm going to try, I'm going to go try again. So I did. Went down, knocked on the door. He saw me. He knew who I was. I began to talk. And he said, preacher, he said, you've done all you can do. And he turned around and looked at his television and ignored me. <laughs> I stood there probably another five minutes. He did not look at me again. He looked at his television Within about two weeks, he was gone. Sad story. Very sad. Would, what happened to him? Well, you could say, well, preacher, maybe you and that deacon just need to take a course in evangelism. Maybe you know what you were doing. Well, maybe that's true. I could use a, I could use a fresh up course. But see, that wasn't it at all. What it was, he'd heard the truth and rejected it so long, Billy Graham could have showed up. Anybody could have showed up. He, he wasn't listening. He'd already, he'd already turned it off. You know, pr preachers aren't just trying to scare us when they tell us, you know, today's the day of salvation. You better get saved now. You better not wait. You better trust Christ. You better follow Him because your heart is going to get harder. That, that, this is taught several times in Scripture. We also read about it in Romans chapter 1. Remember we've been through all that? Because they had a depraved mind, they, you know, it, adopted all those all that kind of living, um, exchange the truth of the Creator for Creator. I mean, just on and on and on. Rejecting the truth, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. But don't give up. Lord, how long? God tells Isaiah until cities are devastated. That was another prophecy going to be fulfilled. Judgment was coming. And we know what the Bible teaches us. Judgment is coming. So until the end, you remember what Jesus said about the Great Commission? Lo, I'm with you always, even until the what? Until you get sick of it and quit. Uh, no, no, until the end of the age. We're, we're going to the end of the age. Now, in my studies, and this I'll give credit to Dr. Gary Smith. He's one of the scholars with the New American Commentary. Listen, here's several applications from Isaiah 6. We're going to walk through these, okay? After reading this passage, here's what we ought to do as believers, as followers of Jesus. One, we're going to worship God and praise Him along with the heavenly host. Even if the world is drawn cold, even if so many are turning out to be what we might call apostate, they're walking away from their faith, uh, by the way, one old Baptist theologian one time said, the, the faith that fizzles was never faith from the first. Uh, so, some people are walking away from the faith because they, never really, they were never really converted to begin with. But what should we do? We should worship in the presence of holy God. Number two, we should repent of daily sins in order to enter the presence of a holy God. This might have been Isaiah's conversion experience. Some people believe that it was, but we can certainly see when he came into the presence of the Lord there, when God visited that temple in 
the wake of uh, King Uzziah's death, the first thing in the presence of God Isaiah became aware of was his own sinfulness. Realize this, when you were talking about revival, when we're talking about speaking truth in the power of the Spirit, don't be surprised that God brings to your attention something you need to deal with. I, I, I've always been amazed in my ministry when I invite an evangelist or when I invite a revivalist to come. Uh, it's almost like somebody never likes them. It, it, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter which one. Um, it's, it's as if they think, well, God sent that evangelist down here for us to tell him what's wrong with him. <laughs> now we got that backwards. Got it completely backwards. No, God sends the preacher, the revivalist, the evangelist, that the Holy Spirit might use the message that the people would face their sins, right? Don't, don't get it backwards. Uh, sometimes I'm afraid in the church we find a speck in someone's eye and we forgot to check for a beam in our own. I, we we need, to be, need to be listening. Isaiah was a prophet of God. God said, they're not going to listen. Go tell them, but they're not listening. They're not seeing they're rejecting and they're going to continue to do so. So what in praying for revival, remember God's going to bring to our attention what we need to deal with. Not my brother, not my sister, but me, O oh Lord. And so we need to repent of daily sins in order to enter into the presence of holy God. Number three, serve the king. Isaiah volunteered, here am I, Lord, send me. All right, listen, number four. Speak the message God gives regardless of its popularity or severity. Now that's a message for every preacher, every pastor, every spokesman for God. We're going to speak the message God gives regardless of its popularity or severity. The next thing, listen to this. He says, cause some to harden themselves for destruction. He actually makes that point. Even if we know they're not listening and they haven't listened and we're, we're going over to speak with them again, you ever get that feeling? You ever say to God, okay, God, I'll go, but I know what he's going to say. <laughs> I know. It's like me going to see this fellow down here. I said, okay, I'm going to go one more time. I had been, the deacon had been, same response. And I said, okay, Lord, pray before I went. I'm going to go try again. And I, I was right about the reception. It, it, there was no reception. Uh, just wasn't listening. Okay, but listen, that's not our fault. It's not our fault. But we're going to share the gospel. And, and then the next point is this. Give a ray of hope in times of disaster and hopelessness. Although some of Isaiah's responsibilities might not seem very inviting, personal preferences and fear fade into the background when a person has had the privilege of seeing the glory of the Holy King. We know who we serve. We know the gospel. We know how Jesus has changed our lives. And we know that the world needs to hear and believe. So... Sometimes when we speak truth, when we share the gospel, some are going to reject it. It's not your fault, not my fault. They have hardened hearts, blinded eyes. The God of this age has blinded the minds of them, believing that they may not see the light of the gospel. So what do we do? We keep praying. We keep loving. We keep, we keep proclaiming. We keep believing. Because here's the ray of hope. The, the, the holy seed is in the stump. Destruction has come or is coming, but some are going to believe. So we will persevere. Now tonight, have you believed? Are you trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know that you are? Would you wait no longer that your heart may not become harder and harder but something in you that still says, I know this is truth, I know this is right, I want to believe in Jesus, then do so and no longer wait.
God, we pray tonight for revival in the church. Lord, show us our attitudes. Show us in our lives what we need to deal with. That, God, our hearts would be pure before you and our lives clean. Thank you, Lord, for your precious shed blood. We, too, have been cleansed, those of us who believe. Just as that creature took from the altar with the tongs and touched Isaiah's lips, that he was cleansed, that he was forgiven of his iniquity. God, we thank you tonight. By the precious shed blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your forgiveness. And yet, Lord, we know so many, thousands upon thousands and millions, have never come to faith in Christ. And upon hearing the gospel, Lord, and rejecting their hearts may be going harder and harder. God, help us in the local church to persevere in the work, to never give up. And may we continue to gather and worship from pure hearts, in spirit and in truth. But then, God, we say to you, we say again tonight, here we are, Lord, here am I. Send me. Send me, Lord, where you would have me, to that lost soul, that they may hear and believe and be saved. Help us, O oh God, in the local church. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. Amen.